Let's go. What's up, man? Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. What's up, brother? My man, I'm so excited to have you on. How are you, Raj? Good. How you doing? Sitting here in a bunker. Yeah, aren't we all right? So I, you know, I, I want to. I appreciate you jumping on here. I know uh, we're tight on time, and um, I, I just really want to get into it. I, I want people to know through you who is Charlie Walk. Well, I think, you know, uh, over the years, I got to hear music at a very early age, songs. Um, I was attracted to amazing music and stuff. Um, before it would come out or right when it was coming out, I'd like to predict, you know, through feel and through gut, could it matter? Could it move culture? Could it be something that thousands of people would sing? And I've been doing that since I was eight years old. So I think for me, I've been super focused on building brands in the music space um, which led to other things. But most importantly, I'm a guy that uh, loves to work with artists that are great um, and help them sort of carry out their vision and be, in a way, the artist behind the artist, which I've been consistently great at, I guess people say, but I actually am passionate about it. You know, every time you work with an artist, and until they break, they're a startup. People don't think of it that way, but each artist is an individual business. Right. And uh, if you look at it from that perspective and sort of think about the beginnings of a company and what a company stands for, their DNA, their brand vision, um, and then listen to the artist, um, there's a very good chance you can be successful, but it does at the end of the day start with great, starts with an artist with a vision, has a vision that's clever, that's interesting, that can get you to stop the scroll. So when you even think about, you know, Instagram and what's happened, Roger, with your content being the CEO of content, you know, you've grown your brand over time, showing consistency to your stuff being better than most. And there's no difference uh, in that perspective from an artist, right? So what are you doing as an artist to stop the scroll? Someone's going to stop and look at you. They want to mess with you. They want to fuck with you. They want to they wanna get into your journey because you've done something clever and different that's made you stand out. That's made someone stop the scroll. So I'm really, really focused on sort of what does that mean how, in this attention economy? How do you get someone's attention? I think you touched on so many different points and I really just want to drill it and give as much value and get into the mind of Charlie Walk. With an artist in today's world, um, you brought up attention economy. What would you say for an artist that who's starting today, right now, um, they're in their, you know, their studio, um, I heard you say something the other day, which was so profound, but yet so simple, is um, one day or day one you choose. So, During this pandemic, how, what can they do to do that? Where, where, what should they be doing? Well, I think a lot of people actually come to me and they want to cut the line. And cut the line means, you know, how do I get in front of, you know, DSP people or radio or platforms and get their attention? And I always say, well, you can get playlisted all you want, but if no one cares, no one cares. So, 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 so just, just because you've gotten in Music Friday actually means shit, unless you're doing things to make you stick. What are the things you're doing to be sticky? The other thing is having a real conversation. Sometimes you make content that sucks. Sometimes you make a song that you put up and no one cares about it. So you gotta go back and do it again. Go back to the plate, just take another swing at the back shift a little bit. Um, most songs uh, and even most artists content at the beginning aren't really well defined. They're not great. They're sort of the vibe and the feel, but it doesn't mean uh, uh, the collection of it's going to get you where you want to go with a large fan base, longevity, all the things that are the makeup, the DNA of, you know, a proper star. Um, I think this period is the best time, even for me personally, you know, I fell in love with the gym again. Uh, cardio. I'm learning how to jump rope. I'm starting a podcast. I bought a podcast machine. I'm learning how to do the things that I wouldn't have stopped for because I'd be just running around with my head chopped off. So this period, whether it's me or even what you do, Roger, or anyone on this, uh, for me, it's about uh, sort of restarting, putting us all in the, the same playing field. We're all equal. 
and then you go off on your own. And any artist that's out there, I would use this time to re really re-examine your brand of what you're doing. Um, if you don't have a lot of followers and you haven't grown in a while, it's probably a reason why you're not, you're, you're, you're talking to yourself. And, and, and I think in the artist game or even the brand game, Roger, you're an artist, right? I look at you, you're a great looking star quality. You know, you're, you're very visual. You're, you're an artist in the content game, right? So anyone that wants to understand how to be successful in content, you call Roger, which is what I do all the time for tricks and stuff. And Roger's actually helping me on the upcoming podcast series that's going to be, I think, honest and amazing. But what we all have in common is the truth. And if we speak our truths and practice our truths, execute our truths and be consistent, be it you, me, or any artist out there, anyone that has their own, what I call star chip, which we should get into in a minute because I do want to talk about the star chip. It's something that I'm obsessed with, something that hit me over the head a few years ago. You know, you, know, you, can, you can be the best you can grow in this attention economy if you're just being elegantly disruptive, right? You have to be disruptive. Doesn't mean you're screaming and swearing. It means you're doing something a little bit differently that matters. I, I think, so, you know, I've been lucky enough to be with you and spend time with you and see the artists that you're devoted to, especially currently right now. And yeah, we have so much going on. The comments are going crazy right now. So you brought up that term star chip. And the one person consistently that you say you see it in is Stefan Benz. Right. He, so, right, right. Stefan Benz is one of, I think, you know, many across the idea of starship. I believe that the biggest stars across all genres, not just music, entertainment, um, uh, Mark Cuban's a star in his own sort of way. And, uh, and I believe the biggest ones I were identified early enough um, and you can, you can, I always say talk to the mothers because the mothers know best what the hell they were doing at two and three and four years old. You know, I have a friend who's got a four year old that's doing calculus problems right now. We know where that goes. We know where he's going. If he's doing calculus problems that I couldn't even do right now, uh, uh, you know, a four year old's doing it. And I think, I, I think that when you think about finding your star chip, everyone has their own. Stefan Benz was a young singer. We met him at 12. He could sing, um, he could act, he could look you in the eye, he was confident, it was just something different. I didn't have to teach him confidence. I didn't have to teach him how to be an amazing singer or how to write lyrics of things that he was feeling or understand melodies and pre-choruses. That was embedded into him. Now can we help him grow and, and, and do all the stuff that we would do as you know, management or recorded music label and all that stuff? Sure, um, but, but the biggest stars somehow are born with that their own, their own, their own star chip, that DNA. Now, identifying that early is the key. When, when you go back and speak to the parents, the parents, you know, upon watching the success later in life could actually go back and show you if they wrote out a timeline that what's happening with that person was going to happen at a very early age. Now, if you yourself can believe and find and identify your DNA, your star chip early on, you get ahead of everybody else. You know, you're not floating through high school. You're not floating through college. You're doing it, but you already know what you're going to do. So you're five, six, seven, eight, sometimes nine, ten years ahead of your next door neighbor or your buddies or your best friends or your girlfriends or boyfriends because it is clear of that God-given gift um, that everyone has, right, except you identified it early. And for those that identified early, those are the ones that end up having the most success because they've been in training. When you think about Malcolm uh, Gladwell talking about, you know, 10,000 hours. Well, how do you get ahead of those 10,000 hours? Identify what you're great at early on, what's connecting with you, with others, and dogpile that, go in deep and carry that out. And that's really the difference between being successful or not in anything that you do. And I think it's also that we bring up um, that just because you're, if you were young and you're older now and you still haven't found that, that it's okay, that it takes time to find that, is it, am I wrong or am I right? I, so, so here's what I think, it's actually, I think yes and no. So I think it's okay to take your time, but I actually think, uh, you know, if you're, if, you know, I don't know who's on here, uh, who's under 18 or, you know, even 12, 13 or 14, but you know, if you have people around you, if you ask them the right questions and really pull out their passions, as a parent even, you know, you end up later in life kind of being more successful or being more comfortable and living a happier life because you're not frustrated. I knew that I couldn't throw a football like Tom Brady. 
I knew I couldn't play hockey very well. I tried it all. I'm little, but I knew early on that, you know, why am I holding this transistor radio on my ear and analyzing hit songs at eight years old? I, I, I happened to, I knew that I wasn't like everybody else. I knew I had to leave my hometown. I knew I didn't want to be a dentist like my successful father was. He's a cosmetic dentist. So I didn't, that wasn't my God given DNA. So sure, I think it's fine about finding your journey, but if you actually look back and have a real conversation with yourself and get into that mode of defining your t DNA, which is your starship, you know, you'll, you'll, again, you'll be more competitive and you'll have much more uh, uh, hours behind you uh, uh, and, 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 and that competitive space that it is today uh, to be the leader in that field uh, that, that identifies with you. I love that. When you, when you were first starting out in, in the music world, what were some key factors that um, an artist, if they're listening to this, they should be focused on? You know, you spoke about earlier that this is the perfect time to be in the studio. I hear you preaching that consistently on your social. Like, don't get caught up with everything going on. Focus on what you're doing. Create, create, create more than ever right now. So what are some things that artists should be doing today um, during this pandemic of the coronavirus if with their music and they want to be heard? If you're a music artist, you should be writing every single day. More is more. You're feeding the beast. You're getting it out there. See what people like. See what they don't. They don't like it. Pivot. Um, be consistent in your content sort of social media ecosystem of what you're putting out. It's all over the place. How many apps do you have in your phone that are even social media? I now have Signal, which is another WhatsApp, because I have friends that only want to talk on Signal. So, you know, we're, we're, we're all over the place. There's, 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 there's multiple places to go, but if you're going to go on them, you might as well be consistent with the content that you pull up. I happen to be a very big fan of Triller. I think Triller is making massive moves. They replaced Coachella with Triller Fest. We had a few artists. And they're just so engaging with artists so and, and, they're, and they're, they're willing to talk to you and willing to help you with your content and they want to see new artists break you know so so how what are you doing on are you on Triller most of you aren't on Triller um, so get on Triller and start and start building that out uh, the same way you would do TikTok um, which is clearly a massive platform today it's, it's really about being consistent and putting stuff out I find so many artists hold back and they're scared to put stuff out. Even if the song isn't finished, I'd even put samples up, snippets up, uh, just to keep the connectivity going. And what if you get one fan a day? Well, if you, it's better than getting none. You know, and that one fan can lead it to 10 fans, to 20 fans, to 50 fans. Uh, and they want more and more of you. They want to see what you're up to, what you're doing, you know, you know, how you're inspiring them through music and even words, even conversations like this. It's no different, you know, Roger, in the way that you inspire people yourself. I love that. There's a question that popped up here on the live and I would love, I want to answer that is um, someone asked any recommendation for books. I know you're someone that is always on the go. I know you do audible and sometimes you're reading, you do a mix of both, you know, you were just featured in book and um, what for someone in the music world, they said any books for recommendations in talent management. One of the things that I want to tell you about an app is an app called headway, which, which, which you can type in, anything that you're interested in and then it gives you basically abbreviated versions of all these books audio or or the physical read on your phone and um so so for anyone actually on this call above and beyond music and whatever else you can type in music management you can type in entertainment you can type in content podcasts and all those books sort of come up in an abbreviated manner which i love so i use headway for informative books my favorite music book is Don Passman. All you need to know about the music business volume 55 is probably out by now. He updates it every year. It's a book that I love for really a general education and all. One sec. A little frozen. Oh, hello. Yeah, we're uh, back. I think I was saying. I, I think I was saying the, the the Headway app is something that I love. Yep. Uh, for uh, various books, and you can customize it. Also, Don Passman's book, "All You Need to Know About the Music Business," Volume ninety five has just come out. You know, it updates uh, online and in the book on what changes, especially in the digital service provider space, how much your artists are getting. 
management, uh, pre-production, production, publishing, all the things you want to know and learn about uh, every facet. So when you say like if someone wants to be a manager, it's just a great book to have to always keep by your side. I do because uh, it's always changing. And as opposed to spending a ton of money on lawyers right away, it's a $20 book that can you know get you there faster. I love that. Charlie, you've, you know, you've experienced life there and back in music, personal business in every aspect possible. Every time I speak to you, I learn something from you. And what is one story that you could share with people that ha has helped you um, learn in a personal and business perspective? Because you served as an executive, your father, you again, you've experienced so much, you've managed talent. Uh, I believe the greatest, one of your greatest traits is that you understand people before they understand themselves. Like you see something in people that they don't even see. You did that with me. You would tell me all the time. And um, you, time and time again, everyone that I speak to says the same thing. Um, and it's not just anyone. These are people that are successful in the music business and in general. So what is that lesson that you believe that has helped you be to where you are today and helped you understand the way you think? I think you have to really be honest with yourself and uh, do do you, do who you are, be who you say you are. I think for me, I have a, a unique ability to look at someone and pull out their best attributes. And there was a girl I met last uh, the last few months who I think can have a massive podcast. She's very edgy, very cool, uh, you know, and she's in her own little business. And you can look at her and say, well, what if we applied your unique skills to a massive platform? You represent America. And we named her in something, in a branded word using the name America. And, and she's amazing. So I, I don't know. I just, I, I think, I think all of this is about, I think everyone's again, a star in their own way, you know, and everyone wants the best doctor, right? And the best dentist and the best content guy and the best podcast. Everyone wants the best and everyone's always looking for new, whether an opportunity or a new app or a new book. And like, I think I'm sort of a mixture of all that. Um, and, you know, my goal is also at the end of the day to help people. You know, how can I take my experience? Listen, it wasn't always easy for me. And it's still, you know, when you're, we're creating a bunch of different things in my world, whether it's music mastery or working with artists or a, a massive tech play that's coming to fruition in the next couple of weeks, you know, and so much of it, it is like startup -y in the sense that you don't, you know, you're right, but it's all in the execution. And I think for everyone that's on this and even for, you know, it's all in the execution of what you do. We could say you're the CEO of content, but show me some content. And then when you watch that content, are you inspired or not? Well, people are. That's why you are. You can actually say, you can look in the camera and say, you know, uh, Roger Rojas is the CEO of content. Why? Because he sweated his ass off on thousands of planes across the world, schlepping his camera and his mic before content was cool and, and perfected his game, his art. That's his destiny. You know, and, 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 and I think that's why, you know, you get to be doing what you're, you're doing and not only make money at it, but be successful. And then I think from my perspective, I get to do what I do because I'm consistently, uh, uh, I think, successful at identifying at least uh, the talent and, and, or something that I think can change culture and, 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 and help people and also make money. I think it's okay for everyone to make money. The give back thing is so, so important to me. And I've started a foundation, the Charlie Walk Foundation for creators, artists, musicians. We're going we're gonna to put money to work towards people that don't have the money to make great content. And Roger's actually going to donate some of his time to help those creators. It's going to cost some money. If Roger has hard costs, the foundation will cover those hard costs. Because why shouldn't uh, great artists across all buckets that have no money, not why shouldn't they be able to compete? Because they have no money, because they were born into a, a rough neighborhood or had a, a, a tough time growing up. So why not give them some money that's somewhat controlled to make content, record music, make their own art, uh, be a disruptor in the tech space. And so that's the give back part. And then the other part everyone, I want everyone to understand is it's okay to make money. It's okay to come up with an idea or do something super cool uh, that matters and, 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 and make money from that. And I think, I think people will get sometimes uh, lost in this thing where everything's, you know, everything's a give back. Well, no, you have buckets of give back all day long. There's things that I knew that you'll never read about. I'm helping people that have no money in the music space because they've reached out to me and I want to help. And then there's a foundation part where we can raise some money. If people want to, don't give me the money. We'll put it into a foundation and uh, we'll, we'll get it to work. 
And then there's the business part. If you want to be a part of like a music mastery, which is, you know, group chats and coaching and uh, 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 live events and a six hour course that I have, you have to pay for it. Okay. You have to pay for it. If you want the best, I believe I give you the best you have to pay for it. Same way. If you want Roger to run your campaign and shoot you, if you want Roger to show up, you got to pay for it. So, so, you create these different verticals around your brand, around you to be able to provide to the different types of people that you run into. And um, the other thing that I'll say is, you know, someone said to me the other day, I have, they said, Charles, I have enough friends, you know, I'm good with you and if you are, I'm good. I don't believe that. I think I'm all, Roger, I met you a few years ago. What if, I, what if my attitude was I'm good? You know, so I'm curious to meet tons of new people. I answer most of my DMs. I've had many a meal pre-corona with people that I just met, uh, and I have my long-term friends. But I'm, well, you have to be curious and want to learn and, and, and meet, a, meet a lot of the, the next kids up there that are doing their stuff and collaborate where you can. And uh, that's been really, really helpful, helpful for me in sort of always thinking about how to reinvent myself. I love that. And I think that's evergreen where that applies to everyone, which is the idea that as you said, there's buckets in life too. Um, the idea to continuously network and build um, your relationships and to cultivate that, which I think is so important. And you do that every, every time I see you, you're going out, meeting someone, you're introducing me to someone, you're helping this person, helping that person. So every, every part of that is true to Charlie. Charlie, has there ever been um, an artist that you've met um, that people may know that you saw something in them before they saw it in themselves? Is there a story that you could share that has people that you reflect on? You're like, you saw something in them and they had even no idea what was to come from that or the belief in them themselves. Well, I think a lot of, I think artists are the most insecure people in the world. Why? Uh, uh, just because they're insecure of their own art and, and they have feels of this stuff they create that hasn't been validated yet. Does that make sense? So, so sorry. When things haven't, when things haven't been validated, uh, you're insecure until you, and then if you put something out and it doesn't connect right away, you're insecure, right? If that makes sense. Yeah. Right? So, 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 so my whole thing is how do you, you know, have that conversation with those artists and sort of make them secure and then carry that out. So yes, a, a lot of the superstars that I've worked with at the beginning, we're in that room alone and we hear those records. What do you think? Do you think it's going to work? And you can see, the effort in their, in their eyes and the time they spent on, on, on trying to make the best music they can. But the scary part, the insecure part is, is anyone going to like it? And that's, I think, where I come in, where you can cipher out what's good and what's great, what's going to make it matter. How can I help you connect and what is matter? that? How do, you, how do you find that? What is that? So every artist is different. So I have to, you know, you have to understand what their vision is and what they're doing and who they're talking to. Some people are talking, some people have a vision where they're talking to a hundred people and that's, that's what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, I think what I'm good at, um, I think what I've been good at is uh, I like getting to arenas. I like, I like, I like big fan bases. I like knowing that if we're going to do this and spend the time, we're going to get to we're going to get to a place where there's really really big arenas, where there's really big uh, fan bases globally. We're in the global game. How do we affect millions of people? That's sort of like my little thing here. Like I don't want to do stuff. I always used to say you can't sell a million records to a hundred thousand people, mm. and I live with that every day. If I really don't think I can move you to a place where there's a cultural moment that's going to happen, and there's a long term play, like it's a waste of time, or or on the wrong guy. And, you know, I think people, a lot of people may disagree or hate on that. And sorry, that's just what I do. Right. And you do what you do. And, you know, you can love me or hate me for that theory. But that's that's the type of artist I like to get involved. And then over the years, you know, you watch Destiny's Child, who I got to work with, you know, Beyonce was clear. It was clear she was going to be. The do you, do you mind sharing the story with um, about John Mayer on Jones Beach? Because that story, I think, is a true testament to you seeing something before everyone else saw it like that 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 was that was the truth that that's I, I think that that set the stone when i heard that story about you and kind of like what you saw in the song well i think i think with um i think sorry i'm just moving around here my phone's gonna die wow. soon um i think you know with john i got to spend a lot of time with him at the beginning of his career we were at jones beach and uh 
second album was out and there wasn't really a single at the time. Maroon 5 was opening up for him at the beginning of their career with a song called Harder to Breathe. And in the middle of the set, he played Cut 10. Now, usually Cut 10 during that era is the throwaway track. It's called the throwaway track, Cut 10. And he played this song. And uh, I was at the soundboard, and I watched everybody put their lighters in the air. At the time, there were no iPhones with lighters. You know. <laughs> Does that make me old? Maybe. Sorry. Um, I don't give a fuck. Um, and I watched everyone sing the song. And I watched them go, mothers, be good to your daughters. And I just got goosebumps because you're seeing boyfriends and girlfriends and girlfriends and girlfriends and boyfriends and mothers and fathers and daughters and the whole thing just like into this record. It was a moment. And, you know, I went back to I'm putting the single out. And, you know, at the, at the time, he didn't want it to go out because he was doing something different. I think he went through his first album being an acoustic sort of guitar player. And then I think the second album was much it was called Heavier Things thus have your guitar playing but you know what people still wanted that they wanted they wanted this guy to you know touch their hearts and all those things that he's the best at in the world so i just read the audience and put the single out and you know a year and a half later i believe we won song of the year and best uh, best male pop vocal for the grammys and i was so excited about it not because uh, i told you so to anyone it was more like you know sometimes when you read the audience and you get a sense of what they want and what their visions are from watching, this is what the audience wanted. So my job was to give the audience what they wanted on a large scale. If it could work in front of 18,000 people, well, that's a really, really good sampling for what could happen globally. I love that. And I think that's, again, a testament to you witnessing and understanding, um, listening to the people and giving them, as you said, what they needed to hear, um, because you saw it in the artist. What is one thing that you would say working with artists has taught you on uh, management? Because I think this is a, it's a massive, as you said, there's egos involved, right? And they deal with a lot of like personalities in this game. What is one thing that you've been able to see or understand when dealing with artists has helped you better understand music because you can talk to someone who's in pop and then you can talk to someone who's in rock, right? And they may have different goals, but at the same time, they're an artist. What is one thing that you've been able to understand with dealing with so many different artists on uh, goal setting and kind of getting them to that point of, as you say, starship in front of I them? I, I always say this and I, and I repeat this. An artist is a brand. A brand is a promise. What's your promise? And if they don't know, we got to figure that out. Because if you don't know what the hell you're promising somebody, we can say that about Coca-Cola. We can say that about going to McDonald's. Big Mac is a promise. It's, you know, it's lettuce, tomato, special sauce, cheese, pickles on a sesame. At the end of the day, um, it's, it's really defining that and, and defining that's the same conversation I can have. It doesn't really matter genre. They're artists and human beings. How do we get to get the best of them by having the conversation of really, who are you? Having that out of body experience of defining who you are and talking about it and then carrying that out for them. And it's painful and it's, it's hard sometimes because you know, it's a, it's a tricky thing when you're getting someone to talk about themselves um, um, in a way that, um, in, in a marketing way, if that makes sense. Because the truth is, you know, artists are brands, they're products, right? They're human products that feel and have feelings. And you're trying to get someone to do something, to stream you, to watch you, to buy your makeup, to buy your T-shirt, whatever it may be. Um, and so you have to be, you have to treat it the same way you treat any other brand. Uh, there's no difference. The same person that's buying your streaming your music or going buying a ticket to your show, the same person that's maybe going to Chick Fil A or 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 or, or watching, you know, Jimmy Fallon, right? They're all in the, everything around you is a brand. So I I always try to think of that artist the same way you treat of anyone of any brand that's important to you. How do you make you important to someone? And it starts off by being consistent, having a message, and carrying it out on 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 a, on a completely uh, sometimes repetitive basis over and over again. Because when you think you're speaking to a million people because you said it a million times, there's another million that haven't even heard it or know who the hell you are.
So I believe also in repetition, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Charlie, is there any uh, books that you're currently reading that you find inspiring and that help you when it comes to the creative side at all? Because you are creative. Um, you're always, you randomly text me ideas, you'll send me merchandise. So you're always, the, the mind of Charlie Walk is always running. Is there a book or something that you're reading right now that, um, that you love? I just want to say hi, Valeria is there. Hi, Valeria, we love you. Um, so I'm more into, so what gets my head straight is not me studying how to be creative. What gets my head straight is actually meditation, transcendental meditation. Uh, Bob Roth is the CEO of the David Lynch Foundation. It's free for those of you that want to learn. It's 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. Gwyneth Paltrow, Katy Perry, Howard Stern, Jerry Steinfeld, Paul McCartney, they all do it. I've learned to do it. That clears your brain. Oh, there's Jewel Walk, Yay! everybody. Superstar Jewel Walk, follow her. Um, that cleared my head. That clears my head and allows me to actually be more creative. So you don't read creative books to get inspired. You actually, I think, need to read about and do mindset things, adjusting your mind to let you breathe. And then uh, by breathing and being more creative, it allows you to be more creative and more thoughtful in a different kind of way. And that's what I've, I've been able to do. So I don't read sort of how-to books and I mean, the only thing I'm trying to figure out now is how the hell to record a podcast <laughs> and how to make it great and how to make it different. And then I'm learning how to jump rope. So like, how do you jump rope without getting, I keep on tripping and falling. Uh, so th those are the books that I'm reading, like things to teach me how to do. But the creative stuff, if you're creative and you're stuck, meditate. Yeah. And, and, and if you want to learn how to meditate, uh, type in Bob Roth, Transcendental Meditation on Google video and you'll see them on the Ellen show. You'll see this, you'll see step by steps how to do it. And then there's a way of going on every day for, for, for what I do. He, you know, he's on every day and there's thousands of people and he tells you how to do it. But think about when you meditate, you're going sort of, it takes you below the ocean waves into a very calm space, clears your brain, allows for more, more new thoughts. You're not judged upon negative thoughts or positive thoughts. And that's one thing for me that I've learned. Because I'm, 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 I'm pretty much like, you know, wild in the sense that I'm always running around. My brain doesn't stop. Hyper, ADD, all of the things that make up a lot of creative people. It helps me. It stops me. It allows me to um, be a better person, actually. You know, it takes the edge off. And that's the best book you can have, right? But, you know, and that's Howard Stern. See, Howard Stern interviews, you know, he's, it's changed his life. He does it in the morning for 20 minutes when he gets up. He doesn't get in his phone, doesn't drink coffee, gets up in the morning and does TM. And then late in the afternoon, okay, he's doing the same thing. And, 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 and again, that's how you balance yourself, especially of being a creative. And I am a creative, uh, as you are. You have to be able to have balance. Charlie, what is, uh, you touched on it earlier in the podcast, but I believe it's a great platform that you've created to get into your mind and kind of better understand the music world. Can you educate people on the online course that you created? Yeah, I created something. Uh, and by the way, there's a guy here, Preza is on here. I just saw Preza. He's like next up artist. His tone's incredible. You know, we talked last night from the studio. He needs to get to LA and work with some people. But, you know, these kids, you know, the whole thing about this star thing is like, Prez's God-given talent, um, top line, melody, vibe, look. You know, but they also have to act like Olympians, go to the gym, lose weight. What's your style? What's your brand? What are you saying to people? All these conversations are what we have with these artists, and sometimes they're tough ones, but they're the truth. Um, to answer your question, um, and, you know, thousands of people a week hit me up on DM uh, and want my launch codes and want me to spend hours talking to them on the phone, which I don't have. I don't think you would do that to a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. <laughs> so why am I different? But I do feel like um, there's only a few of me out there. So I have a responsibility. And that responsibility was to create Music Mastery. If you go to musicmastery.com, I've created a six-hour course. Tony Robbins inspired me to do it. He had something called Business Mastery. So I shot six weeks, uh, six hours. Um, of just launch codes and, uh, and stuff to help you be better and get there faster. Uh, and then for like the more expensive product, um, we have Music Mastery Pro Platinum, which is Monday nights from six to seven and Fridays is New Music Friday. People actually go on Zoom, my private Zoom, 
and we're playing music and we have producers and different people when we're cross collaborating and there's nothing like it. And then when I'm not around, we have the Facebook community and a great way everyone communicates um, and amazing artists are coming into this thing and they get me And the best way to scale me. I figured out isn't really one-on-one, -on -one, but for me, the best way to touch as many people as I can is to do group coaching, group mentoring, hire some head coaches around me, which we've done, which are also artists that are in the program. And we're building something. And once uh, Corona is over, we're going live. We have plans to go to Miami, Course LA. I want to do something in London. I want to do something in the Caribbean, Jamaica, and make some music down um, at one of um, the places that I love with their studios and, uh, and do some really cool masterminds. And, that's, that, and, then, and then again, there'll be scholarships and the scholarship money will come from the foundation donations, the Charlie Walk uh, Foundation. And that's kind of where, you know, that's, those are the things that we want to do. And, uh, and, I, and, and, and I think it makes a difference because if you're, if there's only a few of us can, that can actually do this, then you have a responsibility, right? There's not a lot of people can do what I do. And I understand that. I'm clear on that. So I take it seriously as a responsibility. And, and um, I think over time, as opposed to being an employee of a record company, which I've done so much, look, you're there, you build value for somebody else. Uh, you can get fired or your boss moves out or any, anything can happen inside a company. But if you can control it, if you can figure out how to control your own destiny, give back, make some money and be true to your passions. Like I think a lot of the people that follow you do, um, you can live a great life and live a simpler life and have less stress and be more effective and have a, a much bigger imprint on society than maybe just being an employee of a company. That's what I've learned in my older years, you know, how to, how to, how to connect more, go directly uh, closer to the consumer per se and my audience than, than do it through being an employee. And that's, and that's advice I would give to anyone that really just doesn't want to be an employee. I love that. Charlie, I know your time is precious and we're about that mark for you. Where can people find you? What's the best place um, to get in contact with you? What platform? There's three places. We have a team that's on at Music Mastery uh, on Instagram. You can DM me at, at Charlie Walk um, on Instagram. Um, we have at the Charlie Walk Foundation at Instagram. And then, of course, team at musicmastery.com is a great way to find me uh, through team at musicmastery.com. There's a bunch of people that get that email, but it always gets to me. I love it. Charlie, thank you so much for your time. It's always great to see you. Wish the family well for me. I know you guys are all quarantined in the Hamptons. It looks awesome. Are you, are you chefing something up or what? Chef Walk will be cooking tonight. A little tuna, crusted tuna, a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Yes, just sir. like they do. Just like they used to do at the restaurants that we love. But I will say... Use this quarantine time for me. Lose weight, work out, eat right. You're not really drinking as much as I used to drink a lot of wine or love tequila. I haven't had any in weeks. And the truth is that if you don't drink, you lose weight. If you don't eat fried food, you lose weight. If you don't eat bread and pasta, you lose weight. It's a very simple game. So, so that's, again, one of the things that comes out of this. If you're not coming out of this looking amazing, it's on you. Remember, Charlie, day one or one day, you choose. My man, That's right. Charlie right, Walker Music Icon, thank you so much. Take care, buddy. Take care. All right.